important that we do not take this kind of woman power for granted, either at the federal or the state level. And for these uh, women successfully getting elected to office, these women are truly translating their successes into victories for all women. And women will continue to make such positive strides by serving as role models for the younger generation and by raising issues that, until recently, were not considered the business of government. Did you know that two-thirds of women governors are Republicans? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Well, you know, the Republican women, they rock and now they rule. and one that we should pass on to those who come after us. I want to start today, if I can, by telling you that the most important mentor in my life was my mother, Edna Drinkwine. Drinkwine, I went from the, from the winery to the brewery. <laughs> I know what it's like to be a single mom struggling to make ends meet uh, while caring for your family. I saw my mother do it after my father died when I was 11 years old. And she never, ever looked outside the home. But I knew that, that she could do it. I always had faith and, 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 and honor for her. But my mother knew that she had to support her family, uh, herself, my brother, and I. And with very meager savings that she had saved, uh, she bought a small dress shop. And I worked side by side with her until the time that she sold it when I was 20 years old. And my mother's dress shop was a classroom for me, really. That is where I learned in the importance of hard work, responsibility, honesty, integrity, and yet, courage for my mother's example. I think about my mother every day, especially since I was challenged with the opportunity to become Arizona's governor. I say challenged because Governor Janet Napolitano left Arizona for the Obama administration in early 2009 and left her successor, that would be me, <laughs> the worst state budget in the nation. Now, how's that for a party guest? You know? It's like arriving after the party when all the guests have gone home and the waiter hands you the bill. Well, <laughs> you know, I am my mother's daughter and I was up to the challenge and I I'm a problem solver. I always have been. I made a lot of painful decisions when I arrived there. Some that still weigh heavy on my heart. But expenditures are down almost 20%. The number of state employees are down almost 50%. <laughs> and state employees, including me, took a 5% uh, pay cut during the crisis. But you know what? Arizona now has a balanced budget and a budget. For the first time in many years, and let me tell you, it feels darn good. <laughs> now I will tell you, I truly believe what afflicts our great nation will not be too easy. However, if there's one thing that I've learned from my mother in my years of public service is that life is about choices. It is doing the right thing almost means always doing the hard thing. It is choosing tough over what is tempting. It is choosing truthful over false. And it is choosing government that is necessary over government that is merely desired. <laughs> Speaking about the choices voters had before the 1984 election, my hero, President Ronald Reagan said, and if I can, let me quote, the choices this year are not just between two different personalities or between 
two political parties. They are between two different visions of the future, two fundamentally different ways of governing, their government of pessimism, fear, and limits, and ours of hope, confidence, and growth. And of hope. It seems to me that the political playing field which we have today has changed very little since 1984. Another choice that the voters will have in the upcoming election will be about holding President Obama accountable for all his broken promises. Let me hear what we all have to say. A, a little pop quiz, if you will. Who remembers President Obama's promise in 2009 that he would cut the federal budget deficit in half? <laughs> Yeah, not that. In fact, he accumulated more debt than any president, and in a shorter period of time. <laughs> Who remembers that the Obama administration promised in 2009 it would keep unemployment below 8%? It was still in the back of that. In fact, America lost two and a half million jobs since the Obama stimulus plan and the unemployment now is still over 9%. Who remembers President Obama's housing plan announced in Arizona that, quote, would stem the spread of foreclosures and falling home values for all Americans? <laughs> in fact, housing prices have dropped by more than they did during the Great Depression. Even Obama health care, the promises that he made were followed up on. Remember how much political capital the president and then speaker Pelosi had spent promising everyone that this new health care bill wasn't a tax? Yeah. Now, just this week, I know you know this, the lawyers are trying to preserve Obamacare made the case by telling the court it is constitutional in part because it is a tax. Yeah. Oh, even more creatures. And in my own state of Arizona, who remembers the Obama administration proclaimed the border was more secure than ever? <laughs> In fact, our own military leaders said recently we lack comprehensive border security and a plan. And what does President Obama do? He sues the state of Arizona. Right. And me for doing this job. Absolutely. This kind of ridiculous policy of saying one thing and doing quite another that I touch on in my new book, Scorpions for Breakfast. Which I hope that you all pick up in November or go to scorpionsforbreakfast.com and get an early copy. I might suggest it might be a good gift for Christmas. Yeah. 
that an American makes a choice about what's right and about what's wrong. And here's what I believe. Wrong is no more federal regulation that destroys jobs. Wrong is big donors visiting the White House four times the week before a company like Solandra can receive over a half a billion dollars in loan guarantees for which we are left holding the bag. Is our federal government shipping guns into Mexico yes. and taxing yes. the population? And no one high up being held accountable. Right. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Long is allowing those guns to be used by border gangs to shoot a great and noble border patrol agent. calling a terrorist. Well, how about terrorists? Why? Yeah. <laughs> it's calling a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree.
providence is set before all of us. But, however, because of my mother's example, I do not shrink from them. You do not shrink from them either. That is obvious this morning. And I do not cower, and I know that you do not cower either. And after we get the right leadership in Washington, D.C., neither will America. Welcome here. I am delighted and looking forward to having lunch with all of you. So, in closing, just let me say, may God bless you, us, <laughs> God bless America, and may God keep us free. Thank you.